Now, in a previous video, I made this very simple circuit board, which contains six micro switches, and each micro switch is used in a project that I'm doing, another project I'm doing, which is a homemade 6502 CPU. So what I needed in there was just a way of controlling some of the parts of the CPU. I just needed some switches that I could switch on and off just by holding down to switch them on, letting go to switch them off. So I put six micro switches on this board and um, in this socket here, I put a chip to debounce them, which is the MC14490 IC, which I got off eBay, as I get everything else that I do with electronics off eBay. Um, quite a cheap chip and I've got it on this board here. So the chip is sitting just over here and one of those micro switches is sitting over here. Let's have a bit of a closer look at that, shall we? And I've got my oscilloscope connected up to this, which is why we've got all these probes hanging around everywhere, because I wanted to know how to get this chip to work properly. And when I say properly, the reason is because although I did manage to get it working, it's a pretty simple chip to use, there was one piece of information missing from the data sheet. And that is the value of this little capacitor here. So there's a timing capacitor that forms part of the circuit. It's a very simple circuit. You connect power up to the IC, um, you put your switches input in one side and you get your debounced output out the other side. And I've got a decoupling capacitor in there, but I think I'll pull that out. I don't think that's really too important. So what I mean when I say debouncing and why do I need to debounce my switch? Well, if we look at the scope trace, we should be able to see why we need to debounce it. Okay, so what I've got on the scope here is this yellow trace is the the output of the switch and if I press the switch the, the output trace goes low so I let go of the switch it goes high press it and it goes low and it's actually shooting about between 5 volts 5 volts when it's high it's 0 volts when it's low so the way this debouncer circuit works is that you have the switch normally open and the debouncer pulls the switch up to 5 volts through a pull-up resistor that's built into the IC and you connect the switch up in such a way that it shorts out to ground. So you're effectively connecting it to ground when you press the switch down. So press, take it down to ground, let go, and it goes back up to five volts. Well, all seems good so far, but if we set the scope up to trigger on the, um, on the press of the switch, um, then if I press the switch down, we can see that actually, although you'd think that the switch would just be going from five volts to naught volts, when you press a switch down, any kind of switch, because it's a mechanical device, the switch actually bounces up and down as you press it. If you think about it, there's two contacts. I thwack them together with my finger and they bounce around a little tiny bit. If we zoom in, let's see if we can get a better... Let's do it again. Let's get another one. Ah, yeah, there's a good one. So that is showing pretty, oops, showing pretty clearly that the switch bounces several times before it comes to a stop. Yep, and every time it looks slightly different. Oh look, so there I really thwacked it one and it only bounced a couple of times. If I press it gently, this is my most gentle press, ooh, then it gets quite a few bounces before it actually settles down at zero. And if I then bring in the second channel, so we'll bring in the blue channel, which will be yeah, we'll bring in the blue channel. So the blue channel, I've moved down the bottom here. The blue channel is the debounced output. So if we capture a switch press, there we go. So there's a, a press of the switch and you can see, in fact, let's get a second one of those. You can see that the, the debounced output, which is the blue one, is delayed by a certain amount of time after the original switch press. So you press the switch down, it bounces around, it settles down, and eventually uh, goes to ground. The debounced output is a really clean and smooth transition from 5 volts to 0 volts. So the debounced output does exactly the same as the switch output in terms of going from 5 volts down to 0 volts, but it's completely cleaned up and smooth, so you only get one transition. Let's see if we can trigger on channel 2. Uh, we'll trigger on channel 2, uh, rising edge. Then we should be able to trigger on the opposite end where we let go of the switch. Yeah, there we go. Zoom out a little bit. 
Yeah, so this is the other end of the um, of the deal. So we've had the switch pressed down and then we go up. In fact, let's just zoom out and see if we can see the whole of the the whole of one complete cycle. So yeah, okay, so I've captured there a, a whole cycle. So there's me pressing the switch and then there's me releasing the switch. And you can just about make out that the there's a slight delay between pressing the switch and the debounced output going low and a very slight delay also at the other end between the switch going back high and the debounced output going high. Let's zoom in a little bit there. There we are. So there's the, the switch goes high and the debounced output goes high slightly afterwards. Catch another one. There we go. Catch another one. Now what I've discovered with this particular switch is that the end of the switch press so when I let go it's actually a very very clean switch on the way back up it doesn't really have any bouncing at all so you let go and it just pings back up but it's on the way down where it is pretty noisy this particular switch obviously is the characteristic I think all switches are different in the way they work and this micro switch definitely has quite a noisy um, quite a noisy on but a very clean off so what's interesting is the amount of time between pressing the switch down and getting the debounced output to drop low. And that was where I was going wrong before, and I think I've now perfected it. So if I take out, so if I take out the timing capacitor that I've got in there at the moment, and I put in the one that I had it in there originally when I first tried playing around with this circuit, which is completely the wrong value, which I, I think I just completely guessed at random actually yes it's completely different with this capacitor in there so i've had to zoom out an enormous amount on the scope in order to see the down and the back up and you can see that the switch is going down and ages later the debounced output is going down then the switch goes back up and ages later the debounced output goes back up so what's happening is i think that the timing capacitor basically the larger capacitor you put in there the the longer the delay before the chip decides that the switch has changed. And if you flick the switch really quickly, um, it doesn't even trigger, it doesn't even trigger the debounced output at all. So if I try and trigger off channel one, flick really switch, flick the switch down really quickly. Yeah, you see we can get there, we can get a a switch press it goes down and it goes along and back up again and it's so quick in compare in comparison to the timing capacitor delay that it doesn't even trigger the that it doesn't even trigger the delayed output the debounced output at all so that value that i guessed when i first tried this out was a 104 the trusty 104 well that's never going to go in focus is it but it's a 104 so 104 is 10 and four zeros, so 100,000 picofarads, so 100 nanofarads, which is massive by um, timing capacitor standards. The one that I settled on in the end was a 471, so several orders of magnitude smaller. Um, let's try something somewhere in between. So this one's a 102. Yeah, so a 102 is a much better um, capacitor value. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, what would happen if you took the capacitor out altogether? Let's try that. Hmm, interesting. Ah, right, so if we take the capacitor out altogether, we don't get any debouncing. So the input bounces and the output bounces. So you've got to put a capacitor in to get the timing capacitor to work to make it actually debounce the switch. And a good capacitor value seems to be a very small capacitor, such as a 471. Maybe I should try an even smaller one. I would guess if you went down too small, eventually you'd get to a point where the debouncing didn't work. Let's try this one. Yeah, that's, that's kind of reasonable, isn't it? I think the capacitance could actually go lower because I think as long as it stopped bouncing up and down, that's long enough then. So maybe a smaller capacitor again would get there. But anyway, what I'm trying to get to is a point where it doesn't matter how quickly you press the switch, you still get the debounced effect effect working.